This is RPG Dad, RPG Nate, RPG Jim, and welcome to our first vlog. Um, earlier today we did our podcast and I said we we're going to do something special. We went and actually we went to Reaper Miniatures in Denton. Um, we go there sometimes to pick up minis just because 20, 30 minutes away. So we go up, pick up minis, paint. Sometimes we go, they have a, a uh, paint clinic on Saturdays that we like to go to. Yeah. Saves us some paint because we get to use theirs. Uh, we do have a full set of miniatures paint, but still, any chance you get to use theirs is always a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And especially if, if you have some big minis. But anyway, um, this past weekend I had a chance to talk to Brian from Reaper. When he was at Akon, Reaper has their paint and take, um, where you get they bring some bones, they have some paints there, and you get to paint some miniatures. And uh, that's what actually got us in trouble last year, started on our new hobby, painting miniatures. Um, I used to paint miniatures a lot when I was younger doing doing gaming, but kind of got away from it. And now we went to ReaperCon. RPG Nate went ahead and uh, found the table there while it was right outside the room where we were doing our gaming. And he just paint, spent the day painting and when he wasn't playing D&D. From that point forward, it's been a money sink, just buying minis and paints and stuff like that. But... Uh, we went to Reaper today because we had actually done the Kickstarter a few months back. And, well, it's more than a few months back. It's probably six, seven months now, isn't it? It was uh, 2012 when it started. Was it? Yeah. So it's been that long? Yeah. Time flies. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are still waiting for their, for their vampire packs. I think the people that only got vampire packs, a lot of those have shipped. If you got anything extra, they're waiting for all those shipments to come in. Um, but since we live in the area, we found out that we can go up and pick up what they have. And today we went ahead up, and Brian was nice enough to give us a tour of the facilities. And we have tape of that, which we'll go ahead and put at the end of this. So if you haven't seen it, you can see they did the pouring, showed us how they did the pouring process, their molds, um, got to handle one of the greens. Um, what else? Uh, Showed us the plastic machine. It's pretty cool. Yes, from the Kickstarter, the plastic machine that yes. we all funded is there, and that's at the end of the tape. It's very cool. Um, right now, he said they're making bases, and once they start getting their their uh, molds in, they'll be doing the bones right here in the U.S., which is pretty cool. And we met the guard cat. The guard cat was funny. Yes, she was, and I think she's in the tape too. Um, but anyway. We're going to basically do an unboxing here for everybody. And for those of you who are still waiting, I'm sure you're going to be uh, chomping at the bit and a little bit envious. But, you know, Brian at Reaper said if you live in the area, anybody can drop in and pick up the stuff. Um, and if you're passing through, I mean, they're more than happy to show you the factory and, and get the stuff. But let's go ahead and show what we got today. Okay. Um... This, this is his mini. He's just dying. We'll, we'll put this in the video later, but he painted this at the con this weekend. Here is what we got. We're going to unbox it. The Vampire Pack from Reaper's Kickstarter. Awesomeness. Now, this actually has some of the bigs in there. Yes, like uh, this one. This was an extra. Yeah, so these are like the spiders, the, the spider pack, the extra spider pack we got. We have one we have of the dragons. Just got in the Frost Worm in. We were actually yes. the first people to see it, and now you guys are. So. And then we all, I don't know if this is the frost giant or fire giant, but this is one of the, uh, that's the women the, giants. That's the female in the male of the giant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what do we have here? Uh, we have the uh, elephant I think guy. Here is. Hold on, we're not pulling the bit that out yet. Uh, anyways. And so then a, we have another dragon here. I don't know what that is. That's like an elemental, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some crazy stuff here. It's it's awesome. Yeah. Here is the main pack of yep. the vampire box. And it looks like there's looks some like large I, figurines in a, there. Looks like I have a giant here. Yeah, because they had some giants included in yeah. that when they got done. I think the frost human. Actually, the frost giants might even be in there. What what are? Oh, this looks like a Gandalf. Yeah, oh, I know you're yeah. dying to get that one. Here's one of them. What all's in here? Oh, found the ghosts. Yeah, there you the go. Fire elementals. The fire elementals are in there. If you if you can see the green, those are the uh, ghosts. Uh, oh. If you hold if you hold that up, there's some red in there. Oh, yeah, there's those the are rest. fire elementals. 
I got another big in here. I don't really know what it is, but it's big. These are, uh, I think these are the orc packed and stuff that was in there. Yeah. I don't know if I see a big in here or not. These look like, uh, well, these are those, some of the space miniatures that they oh, have. I found the little creatures. Uh, they're very tiny. Oh, um, they're small. They'll be fun to paint. Yeah, you yeah. might need a really small brush for these. I think I have some elves here. Animals. I found a tiefling. The tiefling is here. Okay. Yeah, all right. <coughs> so, so, put this aside. All right. So, we're going to unbag some of this. So, here's the vampire pack. Oh, um, there are fairies in this? I never knew that. So, well, we're not going to take anything out of the small bags. We can go ahead, and we're, what we're going to do right now, we'll crack the bags, then we'll probably um, cut the film. Don't tear it. We'll cut the film. Should have been prepared. Your name. I got it. And once we have these laid out, we will go ahead. Sit down, baby. We'll go ahead and show you what came in the pack. And so I have a draft. Well, we're not going individual. Right here. Let's just, uh, we're going to dump Whoa. this out, make this a mess. This guy's really big. Mm -hmm. Let's move these. Guy. I'm going to move these to the side. And we're going to spread these out and we'll film what we have here. And, uh, you know, we still, we have more than we ordered, but it's not in yet. Some were in different buildings. Dropping stuff. If you do stop by, I'd recommend um, you can email them and say you're coming by, and they will have everything ready, whether it's uh, in the building that they're in or across the way, if they have it already. I know they said they've got some more trucks coming, but and, uh, they do know what you have, so just give them your email, and they'll be able to look up what you got. And they've got some real nice software. I mean, with the extras that we got that uh, they had available, they ticked them off on the software and we were able to uh so here we go see this is i guess a griffin that's pretty cool yeah Let me see. so here oh, take man. this and put it away i want to paint that so bad that looks awesome yes knife safety is the last thing we're worried about oh my about. god we have like a pile of minis so this is, gonna be terrible this is goes. well over 250 miniatures here and some of these things are not going to need to be painted such but, as these. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to cut the tape here. I'm going to show you this big pile of mess on the table. And it's going to be hard to discern all the stuff. But I can tell you right now, these are probably some of the zombie killers. Because that chick's got a chainsaw there. Um, but we'll show you what we can. Okay. And at the end of it, and then we'll come back, sit down, and talk a little more. All right. All right. So here we are back. We have a giant pile of awesomeness here. And... Here we have uh, one of the dragons. This was one of the extras. If you guys want to pick up some and show them to them. Um, here's a, another dragon. Wait, this is some sort of giant. Yep, that's one of the giants that was um, included in the vampire pack, not one of the extras. Um, looks like a little beholder. The griffin. The we Griffin was in the vampire. That's very cool. We also have some of the familiars and uh, fairies okay. and stuff. Yep, that was included the in the vampire the pack. The familiars are very tiny, so... But they should be anyway, because, I mean, they're just familiar creep familiars. They'll be a little hard to manage, though. Kobolds. Some kobolds. What else do we have here? We have little piles of rats and... Bugs. Another... These are giants. Yeah. Another giant. What else do we have here? Mm -hmm. We this thing. A ghost. There you go. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to show you everything because it's just a big mess here. But, uh, you know, this is... This is cool. This is just a lot of miniatures. We're always looking for miniatures for our gaming. Here you go. Move aside, guys. Let's go down and just show this big, massive pile. So, I know you're seeing a lot of glare off of the lights with the, um, with the minis, but here's the, there's the frost worm. That was one of the extras there's if you got some, it. There's some little decorations. And if you here. look, this I mean even you know, these are these are plastic minis, but you look, the spines are nice and straight. Everything looks awesome. I was I was hope I was thinking that these might not need to be put together, but again I was talking to Brian at the con and he said that when he's actually put these together and they were putting some of the prototypes together there while we were in the shop and uh, all they're using is basic super glue 
and not pinning and that because it's plastic it just sticks together great but um we have some That's, little, they come with little decorations, yeah. like uh, coffins and yeah, stuff. Yeah, remember they had the dungeon decorations was part of it included. If you're I mean, there is, uh, like there's some zombies, zombie slayers. This is just a... a Dragonborn. A, a, yep, a ton, a ton of miniatures in there. So that's our pile of Reaper miniatures. Oh, here's a zombie. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll be back in a second, sit down, talk for another minute, and then... Um, at the end of this, we're going to show you the tour that we took through Reaper, and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are back. As you see, we've got our giant pile. We're just going to call this the giant pile of awesome. Um, there's close to 300 miniatures here. I, I, I forget what the count was. I think it was 300 miniatures. Well, with all the extras, it came out to 300. I think the vampire pack, once you were done, was like 250, 260. Something like that. It, it's a lot, and for what you for the hundred dollars you put out, you know, two hundred fifty miniatures is just awesome. Um, I don't know that there's any way that we're going to get to paint every last miniature here um, I know we'll anytime probably, soon. We'll probably have the ones that we select to paint, uh, the ones that we wanted to get, and they're in here. And I know there's one that I actually started painting and just abandoned because. Oh I yeah, the like ghost. Thing. Well, there's the one that's actually in this pack. Um, the sword broke that you had gotten metal, so this gives you another chance to paint that one. Yeah, I don't know where he is. Um, but I mean, there are just so many minis here. This was an awesome deal. Uh, if you if you got to participate in it, then I mean, I can tell you the quality of these minis. It's just great. Um, Granted, uh, the metals are nicer. They have the weight to them, but these are harder to break. In the metals, and let, but let's face it: if you want some weight to it, you can you can uh, take the bottom off, you can custom base them, um, and just make it as nice as you want. And these are going to be easier to custom base than the metals, pro as far as I'm concerned, because you probably won't have to pin them. You you, you may want to, but you won't have to because the plastic's going to uh, stick a lot better with the super glue. But I mean, there are just so many minis here. My biggest fear is what it's going to cost me in paint by the time we're done getting these things. And this is not even the big ones. I mean, we've got the Clockwork Dragon, they said. They're, they're expecting in on a truck next week. And all the other dragons. They had a couple of them there. Which one were they working on? The, uh, the uh, Evan Rath. Evan Rath. That thing looked awesome. It was, you know, it's nice and big. The details look great. Um, i got to figure out some random scenarios to throw these monsters at my players now. Yes, you do. So Find a reason to throw a gargantuan at them, you know? Yeah, just... Total party kill. You're going for TPK. I know it. No, oh, no, yeah. no. Make a gigantic dragon come in, like, and you're going to have to fight it and then make it blow up and give them uh, healings. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the hell of using the mini. So, I mean, there's some in here that we'll, we'll paint last. The space, space marine, stuff like that, since mostly what we do are uh, medieval fantasy role-playing games, stuff like that. I mean, um, if we if we start with a uh, like, um, what's it called? If we do traveler or something like that, yeah. these these will be great for that. Well, this this will be a good start for I mean, for I mean, some sp I'm space marines. I mean, you're looking at that, it's pretty cool. Considering we now have like these things, if we do get into a campaign like that, it, it'll be real nice for it. Um, but yeah. uh, you know, even even when they added a few miniatures, where I was like, well, I really don't, I, I don't, I don't play that. It doesn't matter. It was all free. It was a great deal. So, and then if we do start playing something like that, we have the miniatures. Exactly. Um, but that's it. This was our surprise. We went to Reaper. We got our vampire back today. I'm excited. More painting than we're going to ever possibly be able to do. I know RPG Gem is going to try to speed paint some of these and bang them out. But no, that will be the skeletons. I'm not really interested in skeletons. But right. We do need a few more skeletons, but I'm pretty sure we have a buttload of them in here. Yeah. I'll just do some silly things. So, again, if you got this vampire pack and you haven't gotten it yet, you're going to be thrilled once you see the quality of the miniatures and quantity. You know, this is one of those things where you're getting quantity and quality on the same pack. And I am thrilled with what we got. And I really can't wait until we get the rest of it. I mean, we had gotten some extra clock mini you know, the uh, Warner Clocks because um, she likes painting the girl minis. I like painting the girl minis. So we got two sets. We'll both be able to paint them. But uh, other than that, you guys have anything else to add? I don't think so. No? All right. Well, thanks for watching. 
Be sure to watch the end of this because that's going to be the video of the tour. And I'd say my favorite part was probably uh, watching the minis being cast. Yep. And I'd say my favorite part was uh, the guard cat. The guard cat, yes, we know. Yeah, it was, it was surprising how quickly they can rack through those miniatures uh, when they're doing the medals. I mean, if you if you watch the video, you'll see. They just put it in and they throw it out onto a rack and let it dry. Let it cool. Yeah, cr cool. Yeah, it cools like almost immediately. Bam, pull it out and they're throwing the uh, spare sprues and stuff back in. But you'll see all that in the video. Again, thanks for watching. Um, we will be back with another vlog probably next week when we also, do some reviews. Also, rate, comment, and subscribe, and uh, uh, and the podcast Thursday. Podcast Thursday. Yep, we'll have a podcast talking about the next, the very last session of this encounter season. Yep. So thanks again. As RPG Gem said, remember to subscribe. Bye. Bye. Well, this is our masters in mold making department, and what? Let me go ahead and turn this off. Voices in my ear. Ah, yeah. Um, what happens is the artist will start with a, uh, a green. They'll sculpt this out of a two-part epoxy resin. Uh, one part is yellow, one part is blue. You mix it together, and we get green. We're very creative people, so we call the resulting item a green. There you go. Um, yeah, it's sculpted sculpt. with what amount to the equivalent of dental tools because they have very fine point. Um, yeah, we use that stuff when we mod. Okay. Um, we lay uh, layers of virgin rubber down on this um, mold box. We lay the grains in. We'll do uh, build ups and things. Take that. Like we'll build up a little bit of rubber here and cut out a little bit of rubber, and that'll allow the rubber to form to the contours. Sure. And that's important because when we lay the other layer on top of it, we'll put it in those vulcanizers and squish it at 1,200 pounds of pressure. Uh, and cook it at about 300 degrees. And if we haven't taken good care of the figure, it'll uh, deform or get squished in there. Yeah. So we want to make sure that that happens, or that that doesn't happen, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we want to make sure we break everything, <laughs> especially original one-of-a-kind pieces that can't be replaced. That's right. Make the artist real happy. Exactly. <laughs> um, so once we've got that, it comes out more or less like car tire rubber. And at that point, uh, we cut in a funnel for the metal to pour in, and you'll get to see that in casting. Uh, then we cut in gates for the metal to flow into the pocket, and we'll cut in uh, air vents so the air can come out of the pocket when the metal goes in. Air is generally bad to have in a mini. Yeah. Exactly. Bubbles are bad. So this will be spinning inside there a lot faster than I can spin it by hand. We'll pour sure. the metal down here, and the forces will push it all out to the outside edge. So you guys have any questions about how we make our molds? No. Cool. Right. And we had the, the plastics machine on the way out, by the way. We'll do the metal casting first. Yeah, okay, your plastics machine, that's your new toy you got off the of Kickstarter. Yes, it's wonderful. I'm looking forward to uh, getting more of our molds in right now. The Chinese factory is so busy shipping a product that they can't make molds for us, right? Now when they make new molds, they'll be the ones that say they made in USA on it. Right, and that's why we have to get new molds, because the new molds have to say made in USA. Yeah, I guess that's kind of a pain in the butt. You can't just say, give me my mold. Right. <laughs> so this is our casting department. And I've got a caster in here somewhere to show us the work today. There he is. Hi, Scott. Hello. So this is Scotty. And uh, now most of the other departments have taken my labor, so I'm down to one caster right now. So, Scotty um, does this layer of talc on a mold. Get out of the marbles on the tile floor to let the metal flow, flow smoothly across the surface of the rubber. It also means when he goes to remove the figure, it'll have a lubricant in there so it won't pull or drag against the rubber that much. The metal is working in there with 700 degrees. Uh, at that temperature, it goes, pours and flows more or less like milk. Uh, it does leave splashes and things, so he has to wear the gloves and be careful about it. It takes about 30, 45 seconds for it to cool off. When it does, he's able to pull it down here, pop it open, pop the figures out. Um, a figure yes, can the ones be... that got dumped in are the best up screws. Yeah. Um, our freezing point of our metal is about 450 degrees, so these can be hot or be solid and still hot enough to cook a turkey. So we do have to wear the gloves back here and we don't touch anything unless we know what it is. So he'll take that and dump it right back in. Four a second ago, and that's how quickly it's ready. Scotty will go through a new cycle of a new mold every about a minute, minute and a half. And each mold holds roughly a dozen figures, so. There we go. Very cool. Thank you.
Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Good. Go ahead, baby. So once we're done there, it goes over here to quality control. Uh, QC goes through the figures and looks for defects. Anything they find that's defective, they return back to casting or get through melted. Yeah. Uh, then it comes over here to the packaging wheel. Right now, my packagers are working on Bones product. Um, Who would have guessed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right now, uh, I just looked at the sales numbers yesterday. Right now, um, we sell one Bones Mini for every three Dark Heaven Metal figures. So sales continue to be incredibly high. Uh, it is our number three product line, followed only by Dark Heaven and Master Series. And that might even change once you've got more of your figures on them. Yeah, right now there's only 29 different figures they can buy. When there's 250, it might become the number one line. So we'll, we're not sure. We're going to see what happens. Um, so they drop the plastic in, they drop the figures in, they drop the card on. The card's coated with an adhesive that's stable at room temperature, but there's a heated plate under there that comes down that's uh, weighs, uh, it's about 300 degrees, uh, and it comes down, presses in, it melts the glue, glues the cardboard to the plastic. We're not melting the plastic, so we're not generating any fumes. Cool. So. Yeah, fumes are bad. Yeah, fumes are bad. Dead employees don't work as well. No. Um, they, they, if you can zombie file them, then they're free. Yeah, but, just yeah. more brains. <laughs> yeah, then they, they, they start running after brains and not so much focus on the uh, packaging aspects. So. A little impatient, Kenny? Yeah, I guess that way. Go ahead and spin. So you can just see the plate come down. And seal it there. And that's it. That's how everything gets packaged. Um, go ahead and cut through here. This is where we're staging the trucks that we've gotten in so far for the Kickstarter. Um, all of these pallets of boxes, to give you an idea, this is half of the boxes I need to ship the Kickstarter starting next week. So, and it's... Uh, I've already gone through six pallets of boxes. So. Wow. Just in the stuff we ship back in April. I, the most we've ever gotten is from Sam, so like a thing like that. <laughs> buying 20 boxes and you're set for life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we spent, I think, $12,000 on boxes just to ship them. So, That's a lot on boxes. Product and product and product and it goes through there. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take a second and see what I can grab for you. Sure. All right. The big ones. Yes. Even though there's very few chances to use it in game. Well, I can make plenty, you know. <laughs> guard cat. You're guarding the secret room. Yes. Guard cat. So this is Thomas Hi. the Death Engine. Hi. He makes plastics for us. Uh, he's got a mold in here right now that generates our plastic faces. Um, and right now he's running on the, the black plastic that are the plastic faces coming. Um, basically what happens is this... This plate presses forward here, squeezes the two halves of the mold together, uh, and then there's, there's a screw in here that takes the plastic out of this, heats it up, mixes it for us, and then uh, there's a pneumatic arm under here that adds the pressure, uh, and it's a hydraulic arm actually, I'm sorry, we have pneumatic in the uh, casting room. There's a hydraulic arm that puts uh, 80 tons of pressure on it, it squeezes into that mold. Uh, it takes about 14 seconds for it to solidify. The two halves of the mold pop apart and the plastic piece comes out of that chute down there into a waiting bucket. Uh, when it comes out, we have plastic minis, or in this case, plastic bases. Those. Yeah. Are made in the USA. Cool. Sweet. Those were made here. So you gotta. On all the minis, you have to change the made in China. We have to get new molds made that say made in China. That'll be fun. Um, we're putting together right now the work order for that. That's basically going to go, these are the most popular pieces. And what we're waiting to see before we hit the go button on that is what the most popular pieces. We know what the most popular pieces are out of the 29 SKUs that are available. What I don't know is out of the coming 225 part numbers, what the most popular out of those are going to be. Yeah. So we're going to give it a two or three months, watch the sales data for the initial 90 days, and then go, okay, these are the molds we want you to send us. So by the end of the year, we hope to be producing bones in the factory made in the USA for the first time.
That would be awesome. So in the meantime, we're producing um, months and months. I think each one of those buckets is about a month's worth of plastic black bases for what we go through. So that's cool. One less thing to have to get shipped. Oh yeah. And wait for months to get here. One last thing for me to run out of inventory on. This is our cat. Her name is Mama Song. 